Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think we're moving forward on the Keystone Pipeline. I asked uh, Chairman Murkowski to join us today to give you uh, a rundown on where we are. Um, we're hoping to be able to finish that bill by the end of the week. And then once Keystone is completed, we'll go to, to DHS. That will be the next in the, uh, in the lineup uh, in the Senate. I think I can report fairly that we have been having very constructive uh, discussions about a path forward, identifying the universe uh, of amendments that we will be able to move through. The talks have been constructive. I think both sides are in agreement that we want to finish this bill and we want to do it in relatively short order. So the discussions will continue. My hope is that we'll be able to, to advance some uh, amendments to votes uh, later this afternoon or possibly early evening, but the good news is, is we're moving through Keystone. We're going to take this bipartisan bill that's good for jobs, good for the country, and good for our energy security, and, and move it through the floor of the Senate. While um, most Americans are going to be uh, getting prepared for the uh, Seahawks and the Patriots to tee off in the Super Bowl, the dirty little secret is that the Super Bowl actually is one of the highest levels of human sex trafficking activity of any, uh, any event in the country. And uh, in, for example, Dallas in 2011, we saw a 300% increase in ads for uh, sex, uh, sexual acts related to human trafficking. The average age of the victim is roughly 13 years of age. Uh, thankfully, the House is passing some very important uh, legislation today dealing with this uh, terrible human scourge, but the, there's also some important legislation that uh, hopefully will get an early opportunity uh, here in the United States Senate. It will actually create uh, victim support programs with uh, tens of millions of dollars of additional uh, funds financed entirely by fines. and. Um, of course, I applaud the House for taking this action during National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month, and there'll be an opportunity soon, uh, I trust, for the Senate to follow the House in taking a strong stand against uh, modern-day human slavery. Last week in the State of the Union address, the President basically admitted that um, the middle class has not been helped by his policies for the past six years. and. Um, if you look at the, the statistics and the data, they really kind of bear that out. Uh, household income is down by $2,000. Health care costs are up by $3,500. And those are the two things that in a Gallup poll last week the American people stated were the most important financial concerns they had, health care costs and better wages. And we agree that the President's policies have not helped uh, the middle class in this country, and that's why we think it's time for a change. The President's focused uh, in his speech in the State of the Union and subsequent campaign-style speeches on the government and how the government can help you. We want to put policies in place that embrace and fight for people, and that starts with the vote that we're going to have this week. The Keystone Pipeline vote is about jobs, it's about opportunity, it's about a better future for the American people. And uh, we hope that the President will uh, decide not to veto that bill and come to the conclusion that it's the right thing to do for the American people and for jobs. And uh, continuing with getting America back to work and getting the, the Senate back to work uh, under Senator Murkowski's uh, leadership on the floor, uh, we've had more votes on amendments in just this past uh, week or two uh, than they did in the entire last year under, under Harry Reid's uh, as majority leader. And what we've seen uh, just this past week is the total number of amendments voted on even by the Democrats, far exceeded the numbers from a whole year ago. Some of the Democrats, uh, Senator Schatz and Senator uh, Markey, had votes, roll call votes on their amendments, and they didn't have a, they never had a vote on an amendment with their name on in the United States Senate before. And if a little later today you see Dan Sullivan from Alaska having a, vote, a roll call vote on his amendment, his predecessor, Senator Begich, in six years didn't have a single roll call vote on any one of his amendments. 
which is about getting the Senate back to work, which is what Senator McConnell has promised through the last election cycle to say, put the Republicans back in charge. We want to get the American public back to work. Part of it is the Keystone Bill, but from a standpoint of, of energy, we'll be having hearings later this week on uh, liquefied natural gas export, again, uh, in Senator Murkowski's Energy Committee, bipartisan legislation, five Republicans, five Democrats, co-sponsors. It's an opportunity to uh, export an American product, help with our balance of trade, help get people back to work uh, in this country, undermine Vladimir Putin, allow our friends overseas to buy our product, and we're hoping that the President will sign that. And it's critically important when you take a look at the CBO report that just came out yesterday, very low growth in the economy over the next 10 years, very disappointing numbers in terms of the potential. We're a better country than that. We have greater opportunities, and under Republican leadership, we're going to continue to focus on jobs and getting the economy moving again. On the um, next order of business, the Homeland Security Funding Bill, the House has sent over to the Senate a bill that deals with a very important issue. Does the law matter or not? The President said on 22 separate occasions he didn't have the authority to do what he now has done and what the Congress should object to. This is an important fight to have. I think we should do everything we can to persuade at least a half a dozen Democrats that they should join us to get this done. Uh, sometimes you don't know how these legislative battles go if you don't have them, uh, and uh, we intend to have this one. Well, look, all I can tell you right now is we're going to the DHS uh, bill after we finish uh, Keystone. The procedure by which we deal with that will be determined later. Mr. Leader, just a quick follow-up. Have you decided whether you're going to run that bill with the committee first or bring it directly to the Senate? Yeah, we, we've got a House pass bill coming, coming over, and uh, we'll turn to it uh, as soon as we finish Keystone. On a, a RAN sanction, Senator Menendez uh, and some other Democrats said earlier today they don't want to move forward until uh, March 24th or later. Uh, what's your view on when the uh, the Kirk Menendez bill will come to the Senate floor? Yeah, well, I, we're hoping to get a, a bill out of the banking committee. Uh, and when that happens, it'll be on the uh, calendar. And we'll make a decision later about the actual timing of it. But my understanding is that uh, Chairman Shelby hopes to move that measure out of the committee sometime very soon. Senator McConnell, what would you like to see Congress do? Uh, this is a point of the leader and Senator Murkowski in regards to ANWR. Uh, what if the uh, Department of the Interior put some further protections onto ANWR and if we were strong to Congress to uh, Well, regardless of what the Congress does, and I can assure you that this Congress will not move forward to place ANWR in a wilderness designation as this president is requesting. But regardless of that, what this administration is doing is moving forward into essentially de facto wilderness by managing not only the 1002 area, but 12 million acres of additional area in the North Slope of Alaska, manage that as wilderness. This is in violation of ANILCA, the law that was passed in 1980 that said there will be no more wilderness in the state of Alaska, no more studies of wilderness. So what the president is doing is not unlike what, uh, what we are seeing with, with the selective interpretation of, of the Affordable Care Act or, or immigration where he is unilateral, unilaterally acting. He is ignoring the law from 1980, ANILCA. So this is, this is an area where Alaskans are going to be fighting back, and I would imagine that I would be joined by many of my colleagues here in the Senate who fear that the actions taken by this president uh, in, in advancing towards wilderness would be replicated in their states as well. Unacceptable. Thank you. Thank you very much.